what is going on guys welcome back to the channel so today we're working back on the 2020 f-250 my mustang is currently over at mises shop getting wrapped so hopefully you guys will see that finish the next couple videos but today we're working back on the 2020 f-250 so a while ago um i think i bought this truck back in like february and uh didn't have any plans on lifting it doing anything to it besides like tinting it um tinting the tail lights doing a few other things but i did get the lariat package with the blackout so it looks really good from the factory um, i ended up putting some wheels and tires on it huge thanks to tis wheels but put some tis 20 inch wheels on it some 35 inch tires and it looks really good without even a leveling kit but i did end up ordering a leveling kit from rough, rough country which was super inexpensive um, and the reason why i haven't done it is because well i didn't want to ruin the ride quality but um, i did have a buddy that ended up doing it he said the ride quality didn't change at all so we're about to test that theory because this is only i think it was like 60 dollars plus shipping so what it is i'll show you in just a second is it's just spacers that go under the actual coil itself because there's already a stock spacer in there um, you replace that stock one with these rough country ones so it's super inexpensive super easy way to lift the truck um, but typically when you lift a truck you ruin the geometry of the truck and that's when you get death wobble and tire shake and it rides like crap but supposedly because it's such a small difference i believe these are inch and a half you can get taller ones but i believe these are the inch and a half ones um it doesn't change the ride that much so we are about to find out here and it's supposed to be a super easy install uh jack up the front from the diff get the wheels and tires off uh, remove like the lower shock bolt the brake line and the track bar bolt or no the sway bar bolt and it should allow the allow the axle to drop which can get us access to the stock um, spacer that's under the spring and then we can replace it with the rough country one should be not too bad of an install but you know how that goes so we're gonna jack the truck up get the wheels off and see how this goes so here's kind of a side profile so the 2020s are a little bit lower in the back so the rake doesn't make it look as bad um, so that's why people think mine is leveled all the time because the 2020s are actually like I said lower in the back so that rake doesn't look as bad and then when you put 35 inch tires on it with 20 inch aftermarket wheels it really doesn't look like it has that bad of a rake um, but i do want to bring the front up a little bit because obviously the back is still slightly taller and then that's next to a stock 2019 ram 2500 so we're gonna get these wheels off and uh, see how this goes and here's the sorry there's like a socket in my pocket that's shaking around but here is what comes in the rough country kit just some new metal spacers longer hardware obviously other spacer um, some stickers and a pretty easy sheet to install so let's get to it all right so first things first we're just gonna break all these loose and then we'll jack the truck up so i want to break these loose because once you get it up in the air they're just gonna spin if you don't get them loose all right then we got our jack placed under just gonna get it off the ground and if you saw the impact and wonder why i'm not using it well it died and i forgot to charge it and charge the backup battery so i got the backup one charging then i'll charge this one hopefully we can use it to finish this job so I had to do it the uh, old-fashioned way but we're gonna get these wheels off all right so now that you got the wheel off what you got to do to let this uh, axle drop a little bit to get the spring out is this sway bar bracket bolt get that one off so you can just take the nut underneath off or you can even take the top one um, I believe you do have to loosen up the brake line bracket and then the lower shock bolt down there that will allow the axle to droop and then we can take this stock one which it's kind of hard to see but there's a little stock spring spacer at the bottom pretty much going to take that one out and replace it with the rough country one all right so we got that nut off up there for the sway bar bracket Got the brake line bracket off, lower shock bolts off. So now we're just gonna lower the jack. Almost forgot, most importantly, use some jack stands on the frame rails uh, and don't use Harbor Freight ones. Noted. All right, so once you lower the axle then, springs should just fall out and there is the stock one. So we're gonna put a socket on that, get that bolt out and replace it with the Rough Country one. So I was trying to figure out how this spacer goes. 
so it actually goes underneath. So you keep this stock piece here, obviously, because it has your brake line brackets on the front. Um, so I'll pull that bolt out, but this just goes on top of that spacer. I was wondering, I'm like, how does that hold the brake lines? So this actually just goes underneath this. So it's kind of hard to see in the picture, but uh, this Rough Country spacer just goes underneath this, and then you use the extended bolt, and uh, then we just tighten it down. So I'm gonna put a little bit of Loctite on there. It doesn't say it in there, but with this being kind of a main suspension component, you probably won't pull this out very often. I'm gonna put just a little bit of Loctite on there. All right, so before you tighten everything down, you just wanna make sure that the top part of the spring is seated properly with the upper uh, spacer, the rubber spacer. And then same thing down here, is you just wanna make sure on both sides that it's all seated properly, but got the sway bar uh, bracket nut back on there, the lower shock bolt back in, got the brake lines back in. Obviously they go in the stock location because this piece stays. This is just a spacer underneath. Like I said, at first I was wondering, I'm like, how does this spacer work and hold all this stuff? But the spacer just goes underneath this part. And then like I said the brake line bracket goes right back to stock. So there's that side and got the other side. Honestly, probably took me longer to jack the truck up. Um, but now, like I said, once you make sure everything's seated properly, um, then you just wanna make sure everything's nice and tight and then pretty much jack it back up, get the wheels and tires back on, take the jacks out, torque everything down, drive it around. And obviously this is a small leveling kit, but even though it's just a little spacer that goes underneath, still probably wanna make sure you get in alignment. Anytime you do this type of stuff, you always wanna make sure you get in alignment. But uh, yeah, pretty excited to see how it looks. It was kinda honestly a little scary <laughs> putting this heavy of a truck on some O'Reilly's or AutoZone jack stands, but they're not Harbor Freight jack stands. So looks like they worked out okay. All right, so last thing you wanna do before you drive it around is torque it down to about 165 foot pounds on the lug nuts. Um, it definitely grew. <laughs> so um, that looks perfect to me, honestly. And uh, just need to drive it around, let it settle, and then double check everything. But man, that is pretty perfect for $60. All right, guys, so just going for the test drive. Um, things to note, this is the Rough Country one and a half inch. I believe you can get a two inch um, if you want the front a little bit higher than the rear, but this pretty much levels it out perfectly. And on the 2020s, I haven't seen this lift kit in person, but it actually might make the front slightly higher since the 2020s, like I said, are a little bit lower in the rear. Um, so the rake isn't as steep, but um, got everything torqued down, just taking it for a little test drive. And then I want to take some pictures for the Instagram and Facebook. So uh, I'll put some pictures that I took before I had the leveling kit, but with the wheels. And then I'll put some pictures that I took after the leveling kit, but with the wheels, um, obviously, because I don't have these stock wheels anymore. So the stock um, wheels I sold pretty easily because they were the blackout edition. So they're pretty sought after. So I was able to get some TIS wheels um, and then some 35 inch tires, but they did rub slightly on full turn when backing out of the driveway, we have a pretty steep driveway, so they would rub on full turn backing out or pulling into the driveway. Um, and that was pretty much about it. So I had to take off like the little plastic, really small fender flare behind the wheel, I had to take that out. Um, I had to bend the metal just a little bit in the fender liner, um, but that was pretty much it. But it still rubbed just a little bit at full turn, like I said, when backing out or pulling into like a steep driveway. Um, but what I just noticed backing out of the driveway is it doesn't rub anymore. So that little one and a half inch lift does make a huge difference um, when fitting aftermarket wheels and tires. But like I said, you could fit these 35 by 12 and a half inch uh, nittos with a 20 by 10 inch um, with a negative 25 millimeter offset is what the wheels are. A lot of people ask me, um, uh, you can fit them. They just rub slightly. So now with the one and a half inch leveling kit from Rough Country, they do not rub anymore. So I picked it up for 60 bucks. I just looked, it's actually retail like 70 bucks. Um, but I picked it up when there was like a small sale for 60 bucks. And uh, it honestly took me like, I think 20 minutes total. It took me a little bit longer. I think it took me 30 minutes start to finish just because I was trying to film a little bit. But if you didn't have to film and you were just trying to knock it out, you could probably get it done in literally 10 to 20 minutes. Like I said, getting the wheels and tires off and jacking it up took longer than anything. Um, other than that, pretty excited about it. So this week, I'm gonna go get an alignment on it. Just like I said, anytime you mess with the suspension, you wanna make sure you align it. So uh, I'm gonna get alignment on it, but we're gonna stop up here at a cool little spot, kind of take you guys around the truck 
after driving it around and then get some pictures for you guys. So I took the back roads instead of taking the highway. Note the uh, awesome cracked windshield, brand new truck, already a cracked windshield. But the thing literally drives just like it did. So obviously when I put the bigger wheels and tires on, it changed the ride just slightly. Um, but with this little leveling kit, honestly, it hasn't changed at all from what the wheels and tires changed it to. So I did notice a slight increase um, in the way that it took bumps with the larger tires. Um, typically what you can do is lower the tire pressure just a little bit, but it uh, rides pretty damn similar. I haven't noticed anything different. And these roads suck in Amarillo, Texas. If you live in Amarillo, you know that these roads just suck. All the back roads suck. Um, the highways are pretty smooth around here, like I-40s over there. If I take I-40, this thing will ride like a damn Mercedes. But I wanted to take the back roads because um, I know where all the bumps are and just see how it takes the bumps. But honestly, it takes them the exact same. The truck still drives straight and true, but I'm going to get alignment just to get an alignment, make sure everything is good to go. But man, this thing drives no different. It's pretty awesome. I love this truck. If you guys haven't driven a newer F-250, these things are awesome. This one's got the 10 speed transmission in it and uh, it's also got lane keep and it just drives like a dream. For a three quarter ton truck, these things are pretty damn smooth. All right, so uh, excuse the wind, typical West Texas, Amarillo, Texas, but uh, there is the truck. So right here, you can definitely tell that the wheel gap is a lot more than before. It's only a one and a half inch, but it does make a pretty big difference on this truck. Um, but yeah, the rake is literally leveled out perfectly. Where I'm parked at, the rear is obviously a little bit higher, but man, I think that is the perfect stance without going all too crazy like SEMA build. Um, obviously you can do like a three inch or four inch on these truck on these trucks and they look really good but for me being that's my daily driver and i tow a lot with my mustang to go racing i didn't want to go too crazy with this truck initially so that's why i just did the aftermarket wheels and tires and then like i said i ordered the leveling kit probably a few months ago i just haven't had time to put it on and i wasn't sure because didn't really want to ruin the ride quality but uh just driving it in this short period of time obviously i gotta drive it a little more but uh it rides absolutely no different than it did when I changed the wheels and tires. So there's a good look at it for you guys. But to me, I think, like I said, it's the perfect stance without going too crazy. It's got a little bit of tire poke. Got a nice little offset to it. Like I said, these are negative 25 offset, uh, 20 by 10s. I could have done 22s. You do lose a little bit of sidewall when you do a 22. Um, definitely the 22s look a little better because you get a little more wheel, but I didn't want to lose too much sidewall, like I said, with it being a daily driver and with me uh, towing a lot with it. And I didn't want to go up to 37s. So like I said, for me, I think this is the perfect little daily setup. So you guys let me know what you think down below. So you'll notice I am on the wrong side of the road, but got to do it for the pictures. Um, it's a dead end, so it really doesn't matter. But anyways, I'm super happy with how the truck looks. Here it is on some nice asphalt. Um, honestly, the biggest thing for me is now these aftermarket wheels and tires don't rub. Like I said, you can fit these tires on because I did for a few months and they just rub at full turn. But what I had to do to make these fit before is bend that little metal tab back. And like I said, there's typically a plastic fender down there. I had to take that off. Um, but they would still rub it like full lockout. So now the truck doesn't rub at all. And honestly, when the tires rub the fenders, it's like the biggest annoyance. And it's kind of embarrassing when you're pulling out of somewhere and they rub. But to me, like I said, that is the perfect daily driver setup without compromising too much ride quality um, or mileage. If you guys care about mileage, obviously it's a diesel, so don't care too much about mileage. But these new diesels do get really good mileage. But man, that is a damn good looking truck if I say so myself. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Like I said, I'll drop some pictures of the before and after at the end of this video, but hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy the 2020 F-250. If you have not and you're looking for a new diesel, go drive them. I think they are the best truck hands down right now. Um, the ride quality is awesome. The power is insane. These 10 speed transmissions are friggin' smooth as hell. Um, obviously they don't have all the crazy technology like the Rams and the new GMC does, but they are coming out with that with the F-150 next year. And then, so probably in two years, the diesels will get it. But uh, honestly, I don't really need that big screen. 
This thing has plenty of technology for me. I absolutely love this truck, but if you guys are looking for a cheap leveling kit, I think that's the way to go, and it's a super, super easy install. So if you guys enjoyed that video, make sure you guys subscribe for more content, and I will see you guys on the next one.